Welcome to OSC Today. I'd like to introduce Oregon State women's swim coach, Mariusz Podkoszelny. Hi, thanks for being here. Welcome. Glad to be here. Well, you're originally from Gdańsk, Poland, is that correct? Yes, it is. And you've been the swim coach here at Oregon State for the last five years. Originally, you were the assistant coach for the men and women's swim team at Arizona, correct? U University of Arizona. Yes. Wow, not only um, has the Oregon State swim team set 11 school records this past season, helping to place many of the swimmers on the top 10 list here at Oregon State, but they've also placed fourth at the Speedo Cup in the, in the fall. How did that encourage the team for the rest of the season? Um, I think it's a, a, a pretty big boost for the team from the standpoint of, of how we've progressed, more so than just results itself, uh, because we finished in the top three in the past two years at Speedo Cup. However, competition was a little stiffer this year, and, um, and the girls, even though they performed better and swam faster, uh, they didn't finish in that top three. However, knowing the progress from the previous years and, uh, and, and knowing the kind of quality of the team that we have, uh, it, it is really encouraging, and the girls got a pretty big uh, boost coming off of that, that weekend in, uh, in California. What were some of your uh, strongest competitors, some of the teams that came to the Speedo Cup? Um, Pac-10 schools like USC, UCLA were there. Uh, University of Hawaii, those are the top four finishing uh, schools. Also, pretty much every single school uh, from the Southern California, Division One, Two, and uh, Three. So there, there were about 30 plus teams competing wow. in the meet. That's a lot of teams. Yes. Well, you, you've helped the, the women here at Oregon State attain some of their swimming goals, but you're also a very accomplished swimmer yourself. You're a nine time All American and a two time Olympian swimming for the National uh, Polish team, is that correct? Yes. And uh, you swam, actually, you competed in the 1988 and 1992 Olympics. What was that like? Most people will never reach that caliber of competition. It's very uh, impressive. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, probably the best, best memories, from the standpoint of being a swimmer, best memories of my life. Um, ever since I was little, I always dreamt of going to Olympics, but it was more, you know, more of the thing that uh, you think about, but you never think you're right. going to attain that goal. So actually going and, and being there was nothing like I've expected. Uh, it's just a thrill from from the every every single standpoint, from just being there, competing against the best in the world, mm -hmm. seeing other athletes, uh, you know, rubbing shoulders with with uh, best in the world in, in every single sport, it was just an incredible experience, yes. thrill. You must have been training all your life for that. Um, I'd like to say I did. I you know I didn't really start training seriously till I was about 15 or 16. Really? Um, before that, it was more my family pushing me to do something, and uh, the, the the serious training started when I actually realized that. Uh, I want to accomplish certain goals and I want to do something. When I started swimming for myself, things started changing and I started seeing different results also. So that was probably the biggest, uh, uh, the longest period of time that I trained since I was 16. Wow. So what were some of the differences in the programs in Poland as far as the swimming programs here in the U.S.? Um, Poland uh, has some real good swimmers, however, they're spread out all over the country. So when you train on a club team, uh, you don't have an opportunity to swim against the best. Um, U.S. being a bigger country, also being a very strong uh, competitive sport, uh, swimming uh, community, has swimmers uh, there are um, uh, at the higher level at the, at the same team. So it's easier to go on a club team and, and train and you're competing against people that are going to be competing at the uh, Pan Pacific Games, Pan American Games, uh, U.S. Nationals, NCAA, so you compete against better quality of right. swimmers. Plus, from the, from the college uh, point of view, there's no college swimming in Europe, period. So being able to combine academics and being able to compete at the same time is a, is a big uh, is a big help. Yes. Yes. Well, you were actually a member of the Arizona swim team from 1988 to 1992, and were one of the fastest distance swimmers in Arizona history. How did the program differ in Arizona to the one that you helped implement here at Oregon State University? Um, there are a lot of differences, and uh, they start from the. Um, just looking at the location. Uh, college, co college athletics is about recruiting, uh, about attracting uh, athletes to your school. Uh, it's, uh, I want to say it's a little less about coaching, although coaching starts once you recruit athletes, but you don't get the athletes that you brought up as from, from the younger age. So it, it really emphasizes recruiting, and uh, U of A is just a lot easier place to recruit because of the tradition, location, mm -hmm. and uh, when, you, when you recruit high school uh, athletes, things that appeal to them at that age don't necessarily appeal to them when they, they are sophomores or juniors. I'd like to be able to get some of those swimmers when they're sophomores and juniors because they're going to be looking for different things. But right. when you're 16, 17, 18 years old, what appeals to you is sun, uh, blue sky, and University of Arizona. And uh, you add to it a, a, a pretty good education and 
a, a program that has a long standing tradition, mm -hmm. um, those are probably the biggest differences. What we try to implement here are the things that we have a control over, which is tradition, uh, bringing better and better athletes and establishing ourselves as a, as a top 25 program in the nation and moving up in the conference and uh, establishing ourselves as a, as, a, as a solid program, both academically and athletically. Well, you must be doing something right because the team is really getting very strong. Uh, tell me about some of the seniors and their influence on the team, their leadership. Um, they're the trailblazers, I guess. <laughs> they, they started the whole thing. They came here with me. Uh, they were my very first recruiting uh, class, and they went through all the pains and aches of building the program. And everything that we see today uh, is, is uh, a direct result of their hard work and dedication. Um, I want to say they took a chance on us because uh, when we started the team, uh, not to make people were looking in our direction. And for them to take a chance on us, on me, um, I, will, I will always remember them for that. I'll always be thankful for them for that. But um, they've done a great job. And uh, this is probably going to be the hardest year for me because mm -hmm. I've never, when I was in the University of Arizona, I stayed there long enough that my first recruiting class didn't graduate yet. Right. And this is going to be my actually first year when I'm going to be in the program that, that the recruiting class that I brought in is going to be graduating. It's going to be a, a pretty emotional and hard experience. You get to, you get to uh, enjoy so much time with them and, and, uh, and, and you really attach yourself to them. And then, you know, by the time they grow up, and then yeah. it's kind of like being a dad. <laughs> I bet. Letting them go. How many seniors are on the team this year? Uh, we have five seniors on the team this five year. Seniors. And uh, we're going to miss them. We're going to miss them dearly. Wow. Well, we actually have some interviews from some of the uh, swimmers. We'll take a look at that. I'm Vera Steven from Hanover, Germany, and I'm the only freshman on this team for this year. I'm really um, glad to be here, and it's um, really exciting for me, especially going to the NC2A this year. A girl in the whole history of OSU who has been to the NC2As before me, so. I'm really excited about going there and representing Oregon State as an NC2A again. I'm Amy Amali and I am a senior from Bend, Oregon. Um, it's really been a challenge in the last four years to be able to juggle the swimming and studying at the same time. I think a lot of people don't really realize that we have to try and study but then we get up at 5 o'clock in the morning every morning for morning workout and that's difficult to try and study and do all that. But I am thankful that I have swimming because hopefully when it comes to applying to medical schools this summer, um, the fact that I have been swimming and spending all this time in the water will give me a leading edge over all the other applicants. Thank you for that. Mariusz, how many new swimmers do you expect on the team next year, as far as you can tell right now? We already have commitments, either verbal commitments or, or signees. Uh, the number says eight, but we're probably going to end up with ten new swimmers next year. Wow, that's excellent. What strengths do you see these new swimmers bringing to the team? Um, I think depth. Uh, that's what we've been missing. We've had, we have a very solid team, very good team. Um, however, in a, in a recent meets, one of the weaknesses they showed was, was lack of depth on the team. And uh, I think that the, the newcomer is going to bring a lot of depth and also uh, equality. It, it, I really look forward to next year. What events did you see uh, this season that needed the most improvement, and have they improved on those? Um, our weakest uh, area was probably backstroke, and we've had uh, some people step up and did a great job for us. So it was it was actually a big uh, a relief to see that happen this year, especially that we were pretty worried going into this year. Um, and now uh, we've already recruited some swimmers next year that are going to help us in that area. And uh, with an addition those swimmers, and also having the swimmers that are on the team currently performing so well, we really look look for the future. That's great. For a, min for a minute, let's talk about the meet with the Huskies, the Washington Huskies. This meet was lost by uh, 16 hundredths of a second, and this could have won the race as well as the meet, ending a 23 meet losing streak with the Huskies. How did the team deal with that, and what, what came next? What did you tell the ladies? Um, I, I told them after the meet that they were the real winners, because uh, uh, we should have won the meet. Our girls were better team. Um, and uh, to understand the, 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 the point of view in the situation, you really have to get behind the scenes of swimming itself. Um, being, swimming being an aerobic sport, highly aerobic sport, uh, when you rest, you improve your performances drastically. And uh, you just don't rest for dual meets. Dual meets are something that you do along the way uh, while you're training hard. So we didn't rest for the meet, and nobody ever really rests for the meet. Washington rested their girls for the meet, so their mm -hmm. girls had a um, uh, an additional boost to swim faster, and their their times were were incredibly fast compared to the rest of their season. So um, 
we did it the right way. They didn't necessarily cheat it, but they, you know, used some uh, leverage to, to beat right. us, which was nice to see that they needed to change their training in order to, to compete with us. But uh, we will look forward again next year. It's another year, and I think the streak is in jeopardy. I'm sure those seniors especially wanted to get them their last time. But we actually have a few interviews with some of our seniors, so we'll take a look at those right now. Thank you for that. Swimming competitively is a very demanding sport, both physically and mentally. How do you help the women to persevere, to keep going on? I, you know, I think they do it themselves. Uh, we try to motivate them. We, we implement a lot of positive reinforcement during the practice, during the uh, meets and stuff like that. However, coming into a swimming situation in college, believe it or not, it's, it's quite a relief from the athletic standpoint because of the limitations that we have here uh, based on NCAA rules. They can only compete 20 hours a week. Some of those girls I used to, comp uh, I mean, train 20 hours a week. Some of those girls I used to training 30 hours a week. Um, also, because uh, high school is not as flexible as college as far as schedule, when you can have your classes, most of the uh, high school practices or club team practices while they're in high school start at 4.45 or 5 a.m. So being able to come to practice at 6 a.m. feels like a country club to them. So uh, plus, plus being on a team, those kinds of things really help you get motivated on the days when you don't feel like doing it. And uh, we've been, you, you asked me a question about what we're trying to do to, um, to implement here. And, and, and team identity is something that we've really stressed throughout the years. And they came out real nicely. And uh, again, it's a, it's a tribute to the uh, current seniors. That's excellent. Well, I'd really like to thank you for being here, Coach Mariusz. Thank you very pleasure. much. And good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you.